Essentials 1. Choosing your device. Android or iOS, that's the question. Instagram by design only legally allows its users to upload photos or videos via a mobile device, phone or tablet, that run the Android or iOS Instagram app. I use both devices to manage my accounts favoring Android for its increased productivity and iOS for its image handling capabilities. I've used Instagram on my Nexus 4 and 5 as well as my iPhones 5, 6, and 6 Plus since I started growing my accounts in 2013 in order to study Instagram's evolution and the minor differences between the two platforms. There are only two aspects that iOS devices excel at over Android devices when it comes to Instagram, image processing and image cap capturing. Both profile photo and photos uploaded to Instagram from an iOS device seem to have better anti-aliasing, which means a slightly sharper resized image. I notice this the most when uploading profile photos, so if you want your profile photo or logo to look as best as it can be, upload it in high resolution with an iOS device. It goes without saying that the iOS cameras are superior to any Android camera on the market today, especially in low light. So if you plan on taking a lot of live photos to post, then the iPhone is going to yield the best photos. The biggest shortfall with iOS that negatively affects my Instagram workflow and productivity is the inability to directly access cloud-based storage drives from within Instagram. When you have multiple ad partners sharing Dropbox and Google Drive folders with their content, this becomes a major headache for iOS users because you have to open Dropbox or Google Drive apps separately, export the photo or video that you want to your camera roll, then you can access it from within Instagram. Dropbox and Google Drive also allows for easy access to photos you've edited or curated on your laptop or desktop and want to quick post quickly on Instagram. Essentials 2. Supporting mobile apps. The SwiftKey keyboard app is the next major productivity tool and essential. It's available for both iOS and Android. SwiftKey is a third-party predictive keyboard app that does 90% of my captions for me. Install it and link it to your Gmail account. Teach it some predictive text, usernames, captions, hashtags, and then access your predictive keyboard list from any future mobile device. This has proven to be one of the most valuable apps I depend on as I scaled up my Instagram empire from 1 to 28 accounts. Watermarking apps. If you create your own unique high quality content, then I highly advise you to watermark your photos. It helps you re reinforce and establish your brand through logo and curbs blatant photo theft which Instagram is plagued with. I've been using Ad Watermark Pro, the paid version, for my Android watermarking needs since I started playing with Instagram and have no reason to use anything else. It's simple to use, allows for easy size and transparency adjusting, batch watermarking, and the quality of the watermark photo is equal to the original photo. It also never crashed on me. As for iOS, I use iWatermark, the paid version, that gives the same exact results and features as Ad Watermark Pro. Watermarks should be small, but visible. I am more likely to share a photo on my accounts that has a small, clean logo than I would a larger, obnoxious one that takes away from the image. So keep this in mind when you're designing your logo and watermarking your photos. Cloud-based storage apps, once again. Dropbox and Google Drive. These are the, these are the two widely used cloud-based storage utilities used by Instagram power users like myself. If using an Android device, you have an added advantage of being able to directly access photos and videos stored in your cloud storage when selecting a photo while in the Instagram app. I highly recommend you take advantage of these functionalities where and when it makes sense for you. Communication apps. Instagram communication depends on user to user. Some people list their email addresses in their bio, while others only respond using Instagram's built-in direct messaging platform, also known as DM. Kick Messenger has become the, def the, de the default instant messaging app to communicate with other Instagram accounts owners and also has group chat features. It allows you to remain private by hiding your phone number and requires you to select a unique username to represent yourself. Most Instagram accounts have their Kick usernames as the same as their Instagram account. But be careful when communicating by Kick. Not everyone who owns his or her Instagram username also owns the same username on Kick. The safest way to know if you're actually communicating with the account owner is through Instagram's DM or direct message, or the exact email or kick username listed on their bios. 
Essentials three, Instagram setups. The first thing that you need to do is create a new email address, and this is essential. This is one of the most important things you can do. Before you start to create your first Instagram account, you need to set up two new email addresses. There is no substitution for this. This is a hard requirement. Create two new Gmail email addresses. It's ideal, but not required, to have a similar email address to the Instagram name you're going to create for branding continuity, but not essential. Just make sure that they are clean, short as possible, and professional. Avoid using underscores or dots in your emails if you have to, as it can translate into errors when people try to copy the email that you have in your bio to writing you an email on their mobile or laptop. Why two accounts? Because one, you're going to use to register your Instagram account and not tell anyone about. Then you're going to list the other email address in your Instagram bio for people to reach you at for advertising or partnership inquiries. You never want anyone to know what email you use to register your Instagram account as it increases your vulnerability to hackers. Trust me, I've seen this and I've experienced everything. Do this and you will be hack proof. Make sure the passwords to both your new email addresses are strong and different than each other as well. And make sure they're nothing like you've used on any other site. Never give these passwords to anyone. It's your lifeline and your first level of security. If you adhere to this rule, I can assure you never lose your Instagram account to a hacker. Yes, you heard that correctly. I say this with 100% certainty. New Instagram account and usernames. Now you can go and create your first Instagram account using your new, highly secure email address. Your username should be as short as possible, yet as descriptive as possible to accurately describe what your page is all about. Keep in mind that your username has 50% to do with people searching and discovering your account. Make sure you choose a different password than your new email address. Do not share this password with anyone, ever. Try to avoid using the period or underscore in your username. I know it's hard because there's a lot of uh, usernames taken, um, you know, but if you have to, use the underscore versus the period. If you must use a separator to get the desired username, again, remember, use the underscore and never more than two. Do not ever use two underscores in a row. It's extremely confusing and makes your account look amateur. Also to note, per Instagram's terms of use, you must not use domain names or web URLs in your username without prior written consent from Instagram. Keep in mind, I've seen a couple people have their accounts disabled for trying to use a username that looks like a .com. On to writing your bio. Your bio is your chance to sell yourself and your account to attract new followers. Every new potential follower that comes across your account is going to spend only a couple seconds evaluating your page. They will either scan your bio to check out a couple of your posts to see if you post quality content, or they will just see if that you post spam and decide that you don't deserve to be followed. Keep your bio short, descriptive with proper spelling and grammar, and go easy on all those emojis. They make your account look amateur. If you want to have bullet points, maybe line spaces to make your content or your bio look clean, Use a notepad app on your, your, on your mobile phone to format your bio how you want it to look, then copy it and paste it into your bio in your Instagram account. Limit your bio to no more than four or five lines so that your bio doesn't take the entire screen when people come to your uh, account. Let them see some of the photos that you've posted. Next to having an impactful bio, your profile photo visually reveals more about you and your brand to your potential followers. Keep your, your profile photo simple with little to no text. If you must use letters to abbreviate your page name, use a clean and simple font that's easy to read. Regardless of what device you're going to use to be using to manage your accounts, please upload your avatar using an iPhone iOS device with a picture resolution of 1080 by 1080 pixels, as it will ensure your profile picture is razor sharp, high definition without aliasing. Also, consider how your avatar will look in your followers' newsfeed. Again, the simpler the design, the more effective it will be in maintaining your brand when a user sees it on your posts in their Instagram feed. The final piece of setting up your Instagram account is adding a URL to your bio. This is the only clickable, linkable URL that Instagram allows on each of our profile pages. So let's use it to our, to our advantage. Unless you're proficient with your own website analytics, I highly suggest using a URL shortening device such as Bitly which allows you to shorten a long, messy URL into a custom, short Bitly link. 
and it will also allow you to track the number of clicks it receives to provide you with valuable feedback of how many people are clicking through on your URL. If you're going to use a, long, um, a big long affiliate URL or even a YouTube URL to a specific video or your YouTube profile or a Facebook profile, then please use a URL shortening link. There's nothing more amateur than seeing some long URL on someone's Instagram profile. Keep it short, keep it clean, and keep it professional if you want to be taken seriously. If you want to run an account with the goal to establish your brand and account and to make money, then keep your account public. There's nothing that turns off potential followers more than arriving at your account and having to follow a private account just to see what you post. If you're running a personal account, then you might want to consider making your account private in order to shelter your personal information from stalkers, weirdos, and the internet in general. You never know who's going to use your photos for what reason. Next to your brand new email addresses you created, the ones you created solely for your new Instagram account, your second level protection is to add a link to your smartphone telephone number in your Instagram account. Adding your telephone number into your Instagram account profile adds another level of security in the event you lose your password or get hacked. Instagram allows you to do a very quick SMS text reset, text message password reset directly from the Android app, but not from iOS for some reason. If you have an iOS device, make sure you have a good friend on speed dial who can initiate an SMS reset for your telephone number on their Android device. Hopefully iOS will add this functionality soon. Your third and final level of defense is to connect your Facebook account to your Instagram account. This will add another level of security by allowing you to log in and do a password reset in the event you, get, you forget your password or get hacked with your secure Facebook Connect credentials. The difference of making tens of thousands of dollars versus not making that kind of money is in my next video, which I'll expose the mistakes that almost every Instagrammer is making and why it's costing them thousands of dollars.